Hello everyone, Evan Assistant here, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at applying aspect ratio masks within Avid, uh, the best ways and how to do it, how to get it exactly right, and to keep it nice and simple, um, easy to track and apply. So let's take a look. Right now, first off, what I see most people doing when they first come to Avid Media Composer, if they want to make a mask, so here I've got a 16 by 9 frame, it's a full frame here. What they'll do is, is they'll, they'll go to their effect palette under film and they'll grab, you know, one of, one of these mask layers here that they can just throw on a video layer and it'll affect everything below it. So if I throw the anamorphic mask on there and then boom, we've got, we've got black bars top and bottom. Now you notice here though, that once you throw the anamorphic mask on, it's way too cropped. Like that's that's way too cropped. Like that's more than, you know, uh, 240 mask. Uh, and so you're going to have to adjust that by going into the effect editor and adjusting the height of it and sort of spreading it out. But then that can be quite finicky to get exactly right. You know, especially if you have a specific mask in mind that you have to adhere to, like 185 or 235. This is kind of a little bit finicky. It's not, it's not ideal. So let me show you the sort of more Avid approved way. And it's also just a really handy feature since it can be used for other things too. So first things first, we're going to get rid of that anamorphic we just put on. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up settings window. And then I'm going to come here and click on mask margins down the bottom here of our settings. When I click on that, you'll see it's set to 16 by 9 already um, in our target settings. Now, this is just automatically going to be set to the aspect ratio of whatever your project set up as. Now, you know, 90% of the projects around the world in Avid will be 16 by 9, 19, 20 by 1080. That is how almost every movie or TV show is cut, is, is in full HD resolution. You know, and in, in the offline stage anyway, and then, you know, other resolutions, higher res will get sorted later. It's just a really good resolution to work in. Um, really good kind of middleweight resolution. And so this is probably what you'll see when you first load it up. If you click on it there, you'll notice a drop down um, with a whole bunch of different suggested resolutions here. And you'll get your little ones that you like to export for socials up there, like 9x16 and one by one but you've also got all your DCI compliant resolutions here as well, like 185, 190, um, 235, 239, you know, your much more common cinematic um, aspect ratios. So for this example, I'm going to use 235, and we're going to pretend like 235 is our standardized set resolution for this piece that we're working in. So I'm going to select 235 there, and then you can see that it gives me some information here after you've done that. It'll tell me what the pixel equivalent is of that. So that, you know, my 1920 by 1080 gets turned into 1920 by 817. So that's after we've taken away the pixels that, you know, we're eating in um, with the mask. And it's, it also tells me the percentages of how much it, the, the black bars are going to eat into the picture. So 12.17% from both the top and the bottom. So with this window set to 235, we're going to hit apply and then OK. And, you know, before anybody points out, you'll notice that you're not going to see anything here. Nothing changes. You don't see anything change visually. You still don't have any mask. But <clears throat> all you have to do to bring it up is a right click in the composer window on your viewer. And then you come down to target mask and select black mask. And Bob's your uncle there is a perfect 235 mask applied to our image. Now, you'll notice we had a few other options there. We can also select mix to white or mix to black. And then we get a 50% opacity mask. So this is actually really good for um, resizing and reframing because we can see exactly what the extra material is that we can have top and bottom. And then we can reframe stuff up and down, you know, within our safe area, you know, here in the middle. So that is a feature that I use a lot, <clears throat> but I'm going to change this back to black mask for now. And you can set this target mask independently for both the source and the record monitor as well. So if I, I put this back to a dual monitor, you can see, you know, it's it's not it's not being shown in my source here because it's quite handy to show the full frame in the source. Um, but if you wanted it there as well, you can also go target mask and apply it there too, so that so that you're seeing your mask applied everywhere automatically. 
And if you're using full screen playback in Avid, by the way, so you're not using a uh, Blackmagic box or an Asia box to get your full screen playout, if you're just using full screen playback on your computer, you will have to set it there in your settings as well. So just under your settings, come down to full screen playback, double click there, and then you can set your target mask there as well. So that's a really good place to set um, black mask, like you want it to appear there as well. You want your mask to be applied um, when you're viewing full screen playback because you know you need to be able to see what your mask is. Now I can already hear some people saying, however, what if you want some burn-ins in the mask? Like say you wanted a time code reader to apply within your mask, you know, so when you're doing outputs to sound and things like that, inside of the letterbox is a really good place to put your time code reader and burn-ins and things like that because it's not encroaching on the picture. And you'll notice I did have a burn in there when you first launched it. And now not only can we not see it, it's actually partially getting hid behind the be, behind our masking here. So I'm gonna put this back to single monitor. And then you can see my watermarks getting hid behind it. And my time code reader is not even viewable. You can't see it. And so, yeah, of course, that's not ideal. That's, that's not what you want. And how you would fix that is I go back to that anamorphic mask that we had right at the start that was far too big. And you drop that on the timeline, right? And then what I do is I uh, set my target mask to mix to black, so it's half opacity. Then I go edit my anamorphic mask and I just line it up. So, so my mix to black mask finishes here. So that's where I need to raise the height of the anamorphic mask to, to make sure it's exactly 235. So if I recall right, this is like 75 there, 76. And then we just grab our anamorphic mask there, drag it into the bin, rid of the old one, and then just call it 235 mask. And now you would have an exact mask that, that if you wanted burn-ins and stuff appearing um, on your export, um, you would just set that underneath those, uh, like so, like you would normally do. So, so now that is directly below, below there. Um, we can see my time code reader. Uh, that's a watermark, so we kind of want that on the image anyway. Um, and you know, we're, we're kind of in a better space there. So then you would have something a little bit like this. You've got your burn-ins. So this isn't using our target mass settings. This is using the mass that we've just made that is on the timeline here. <clears throat> now, last thing to point out here is that when you're doing your exports, we have an option here called enable mask margins. So let me show the difference between having that ticked and having it not ticked. Our mask margins export has thrown our aspect ratio mask or black bars on top at the point of export. So whatever your image is on the way out is getting that bar applied. So because we had our burn in here, it's had now the aspect ratio put on top of it. So we can't see that burn in, uh, that's gone. Whereas our no mass margins, that, that was unticked, that wasn't enabled, um, you know, we can still see our burn in. So, <clears throat> so if you want to have any information inside your mask, then yes, you don't want to use this feature. If you want to do multiple exports, one with burn in and one clean, then having just two different export settings, uh, exporting this out, like with this function turned on, can be the way to go, since you'll have a clean um, aspect ratio uh, with the mass margins applied. But if you're in an internal environment, say an animation, and there's a specific aspect ratio bar that you have to have on all the time, this is just a nice and simple way to do it so that you're not fiddling around with an, an effect on the timeline that can get edited and cropped and dragged back as you're editing. Um, now, of course, you know, you can just apply it right before you export. But this is just a really handy feature that I wanted to raise and, and show within Avid since um, it can even just help you build masks anyway. So then you can just keep that 235 mask in your filters bin, save it for all your other projects, and then you can just drag and drop on whenever you need it. Um, so that is mask margins uh, within Avid. Um, it is a really, really nifty way to create a mask, to, to see the safe area of 235, 185, any of these different ones, one by one, um, if you need it. 
And um, yeah, I, I have employed this function on countless, countless different productions over the years. It is very, very useful. Um, thank you, Avid. And that is enough for me in this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching. I do greatly appreciate it, especially to Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Always greatly appreciated. And I will see you in the next video very, very soon. Bye.